The Law of One, Book One, Session Three, January 21st, 1981. I am Ra. I greet you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. I communicate with you now. My first question is, did we correctly perform the ritual for starting the communication? I am Ra. The placement of the artifacts designed to balance the instrument should be placed at the instrument's head for the least distortion of effect. The remainder of the beginning account of purpose is quite acceptable for those speaking desire to serve. Otherwise, the attendant emphasis in mind complexities would not have been effected properly. We caution you to guard against those who are not wishing to serve others, above all else, from taking part in the beginning or in lending their distortions of mind-body-spirit complex to any session as we should then be unable to properly blend our distortions with those of this instrument. Should I move the Bible, candle and incense at this time? I am Ra. This would be appropriate. Is this the proper position? I am Ra. Please correct the angle of the incense so that it is perpendicular to the plane of 20 degrees north by northeast. Is this satisfactory? Please check your eye to make fine correction. We will explain the process by which this becomes a significant distortion balancer. The incense acts as energizer to the physical body of this instrument, signifying its humanity. This is, therefore, a necessity that the wafted smoke is perceived from the same relative angle as the instrument perceives the open Bible balanced by the lighted candle signify love light and light love, and therefore give the mental and emotional, shall we call it, distortion complex of this instrument the sight of paradise and peace which it seeks. Thus energized from the lower to the higher, the instrument becomes balanced and does not grow fatigued. We appreciate your concern, for this will enable our teach learning to proceed more easily. Does it appear correctly aligned now? I judge it within limits of acceptability. At the last session, we had two questions we were saving for this session. One having to do with the possible capstone of the Great Pyramid at Giza, the other heavy blocks. I know these questions are of no importance at all with respect to the law of one, but it was my judgment, which you may correct, that this would provide an easy entry for the reader of the material. We are very grateful for your contact and will certainly take suggestions about how we should proceed with this. This is just one guess. I am Ra. I will not suggest the proper series of questions. This is your prerogative as free agent of the law of one, having learned understood that our social memory complex cannot effectually discern the distortions of the societal mind-body-spirit complex of your peoples. We wish now to fulfill our teach-learning honor responsibility by answering what is asked. This only will suffice, for we cannot plumb the depths of the distortion complexes which infect your peoples. The first question, therefore, is the capstone. We iterate the unimportance of this type of data. The so-called Great Pyramid had two capstones. One was of our design and was of smaller and carefully contrived pieces of the material upon your planet, which you call granite. This was contrived for crystalline properties and for the proper flow of your atmosphere via a type of what you would call chimney. At a time when we as a people had left your density, the original was taken away and a more precious one substituted. It consisted in part of a golden material. This did not change the properties of the pyramid, as you call it at all, and was a distortion due to the desire of a few to mandate the use of the structure as a royal place only. Do you wish to query further upon this first question? What did you mean by chimney? What was its specific purpose? There's a proper flow of your atmosphere which, though small, freshens the whole of the structure. This was designed by having airflow ducts, as this instrument might call them, situated so that there was a freshness of atmosphere without any disturbance or draught. How were the blocks moved? I am Ra. You must picture the activity within all that is created. The energy is, though finite, quite large compared to the understanding distortion of your people. This is an obvious point well known to your peoples, but little considered. This energy is intelligent. It is hierarchical. Much as your mind-body-spirit complex dwells within an hierarchy of vehicles and retains, therefore, the shell or shape or field and the intelligence of each ascendingly intelligent or balanced body, so does each atom of such a material as rock. When one can speak to that intelligence, the finite energy of the physical or chemical rock body is put into contact with that infinite power which is resident in the more well-tuned bodies, be they human or rock. With this connection made, a request may be given. 
the intelligence of infinite rockness communicates to its physical vehicle and that splitting and moving which is desired is then carried out through the displacement of the energy field of rockness from finity to a dimension which we may conveniently call simply infinity. In this way, that which is required is accomplished due to the cooperation of the infinite understanding of the Creator in dwelling in the living rock. This is, of course, the mechanism by which many things are accomplished which are not subject to your present means of physical analysis of action at a distance. I'm reminded of the statement, approximately, if you had enough faith you could say to a mountain to move and the mountain would move. I assume this is approximately what you're saying, and I'm assuming that if you are fully aware of the law of one, then you are able to do these things, is that correct? I am Ra. The vibratory distortion of sound, faith, is perhaps one of the stumbling blocks between those of what we may call the infinite path and those of the finite proving understanding. You are precisely correct in your understanding of the congruency of faith and intelligent infinity. However, one is a spiritual term, the other more acceptable perhaps to the conceptual framework distortions of those who seek with measure and pen. Then, if an individual is totally informed with respect to the law of one and lives, and is the law of one, such things as the building of a pyramid by direct mental effort would be commonplace. Is that what I'm to understand? Am I correct? I am Ra. You're incorrect in that there is a distinction between the individual power through the law of one and the combined or societal memory complex mind-body-spirit understanding of the law of one. In the first case, only the one individual, purified of all flaws, could move a mountain. In the case of mass understanding of unity, each individual may contain an acceptable amount of distortion, and yet the mass mind could move mountains. The progress is normally from the understanding, which you now seek to a dimension of understanding, which is governed by the laws of love, and which seeks the laws of light. Those who are vibrating with the law of light seek the law of one. Those who vibrate with the law of one seek the law of foreverness. We cannot say what is beyond this dissolution of the unified self with all that there is, for we still seek to become all that there is, and still are we Ra. Thus our paths go onward. Was the pyramid then built by the mutual action of many of your people? I am Ra. The pyramids which we thought built were constructed from thought forms created by our social memory complex. Then the rock was created by thought in place rather than moved from somewhere else? Is that correct? I am Ra. We built with everlasting rock the Great Pyramid, as you call it. Other of the pyramids were built with stone, moved from one place to another. What is everlasting rock? I am Ra. If you can understand the concept of thought forms, you will realize that the thought form is more regular in its distortion than the energy fields created by the materials in the rock, which has been created through thought form from thought to finite energy and beingness in your, shall we say, distorted reflection of the level of the thought form. May we answer you in any more helpful way? This is slightly trivial, but I was wondering why, in that case, the pyramid was made of many blocks rather than the whole thing being created at once. I am Ra. There is a law which we believe to be one of the more significant primal distortions of the law of one. That is the law of confusion. You have called this the law of free will. We wish to make an healing machine, or time-space ratio complex, which was as efficacious as possible. However, we didn't desire to allow the mystery to be penetrated by the peoples in such a way that we became worshipped as builders of a miraculous pyramid. Thus, it appears to be made, not thought. Well then, you speak of the pyramid, especially the Great Pyramid, I assume, as primarily a healing machine, and also spoke of it as a device for initiation. Are these one and the same concepts? They are part of one complex of love-light intent sharing. To use the healing aspects properly, it was important to have a purified and dedicated channel or energizer for the love light of the infinite creator to flow through. Thus, the initiatory method was necessary to prepare the mind, the body and the spirit for service in the creator's work. The two are integral. Does the shape of the pyramid itself, is that a key function in the initiation process? This is a large question. We feel that we shall begin and ask you to re-evaluate and ask further at a later session this somewhat, shall we say, informative point to begin. There are two main functions of the pyramid in relation to the initiatory procedures. One has to do with the body. Before the body can be initiated, the mind must be initiated. This is the point at which most adepts of your present cycle find their mind-body-spirit complexes distorted from. 
When the character and personality that is the true identity of the mind has been discovered, the body then must be known in each and every way. Thus, the various functions of the body need understanding and control with detachment. The first use of the pyramid, then, is the going down into the pyramid for purposes of deprivation of sensory input, so that the body may, in a sense, be dead and another life begin. We advise at this time any necessary questions and a fairly rapid ending of this session. Have you any query at this time space? The only question is, is there anything that we have done wrong or anything that we could do to make the instrument more comfortable? We scan this instrument. This instrument has been much aided by these precautions. We suggest only some attention to the neck, which seems in this body distortion to be distorted in the area of strength weakness. More support, therefore, to the neck area may be an aid. Should we have her drink the water from the chalice behind her head after we charge it, or should we use a different glass of water? That, and only that chalice, shall be the most beneficial, as the virgin material living in the chalice accepts, retains, and responds to the love vibration activated by your beingness. I am Ra. I will now leave this group rejoicing in the power and peace of the one creator, Adonai, 